And rather than it being a one round knockout job from Tyson Fury that 99% of people expected, it was actually a competitive fight. <laughs>Hi, it's Andy here from Fighters Talk TV with Matchrooms Frank Smith. How are you doing? I'm good, mate. Good to be up. Good to be up here in Newcastle. Uh, it's not raining, which I'm always happy. Well, it's because summertime, isn't it? Yeah, it feels like summertime. <laughs> it's November. <laughs> Absolutely. It's November 9th. It's lovely. And, and what a, a good press conference. A bit lively in places, and uh, you know, uh, Masood versus San Martin, a great main event. And uh, yeah, what's your thoughts? Yeah, look, it's exactly what we need. You know, especially for these young next gen fighters coming through, building through the ranks. You know, they need to get. They need to get this experience, both in the press conferences all the way through to fight night. You know, look, Shabazz headlining. I don't think Shabazz is far off from fighting for a world title. You know, so for so long out the ring, it's a perfect fight for him. Jose San Martin's an experienced fighter. I think he's going to give him a, a tough test, but exactly the kind of thing he needs. Uh, on the undercard, you've got some unbelievable standout, you know, amateurs coming through as well. You know, the likes of Cameron Vong, who's someone we're really excited about. Sold 600 tickets. We saw his debut on the card of Wood Warrington. You know, he's got a massive future here. Um, Jimmy Sainz as well, you've got the Reese brothers on there, Mark Dickinson having a bit of back and forth, this is the first time I've ever seen that from him, um, you know, showing the character as well there, you know, Ishmael as well, you know, against Ewan, you've got 8-0 eight, eight and, and 11-0, and that's a fight that really is going to set the winner up for, you know, to, to really move forward off this platform into some big fights, so, you know, top to bottom, it's a, it's a great card and very excited for it, and Callum French as well. You know, six months out of the ring, he's back. He's got a massive following, and uh, we're in for a great fight there as well. Yeah, and some people betting their purses on the fight as well. That was yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I was staying well out of the way. Of it. <laughs> don't blame you. Don't blame you. Okay, so want to move. Uh, uh, obviously, a couple of weeks back, we had the Fury and Garnu fight. There's talks of Joshua in with either one of them. Um, I spoke with Eddie about three, four weeks ago, and I was, he was saying, you know, Josh just not interested in the MMA. All of a sudden, now that's changed over. Is that because of uh, you know, and Garnu's credibility has risen since? the Fury fight do you think? Yeah look it's definitely his credibility has risen, risen but as well so as the, uh, the commercial side of it you know, from a commercial standpoint, it's a massive fight. Um, but I saw him come out, he said he wants to make it the only fight he wants in boxing right now is the Fury rematch. I think it's great to see that all of these things, I don't think it's negative for boxing. You know, some people coming out saying it's terrible for boxing. I actually don't think it is. It brought in a huge audience, had massive marketing behind it, uh, and those maybe some new fans who watched it. And rather than it being a one round knockout job from Tyson Fury that 99% of people expected, it was actually a competitive fight. Whether it should or shouldn't have been, it was. You know, and, and that, that, I don't think that's a bad thing. So we've got Deontay Wilder posting off uh, on all social media that he's going to get on a plane, come over and face Anthony Joshua. Do you think that's likely to happen, that fight? Probably not. I, I mean, oh, sorry, I thought you meant, is he going to get on a plane and come over and face Anthony <laughs> Joshua? I, I don't know. It'd be quite entertaining. It'd, be, it'd make a good little content series. I definitely think the fight happens. I think all these fights will happen. I think there's never been a better time in heavyweight boxing. Um, you know, hopefully... We get some news soon of when the undisputed Fury Usyk fight is going to take place here in February time. Um, it's a brilliant fight and, you know, it's a, it's a good time. And I definitely think we'll see all these massive fights in the heavyweight division. Yeah, definitely. When I said about last week, Joe Cordina. So a bit of a tough time getting through it, a bit fiery at the end. What next for Joe? Is it, is it Leeward? Yeah, look, we need to step on for the big fights now. Look, that fight probably shouldn't have been as tough as it, as it ended up being. Um, and, you know, the, the likes of the Leeward... Uh, Ashaki Foster, Navarretti, all of those fights are potentials now and we have to make sure, you know, we have to deliver the biggest opportunity for him. We've been with Joe since his debut and we believe there's some big fights to be made with him. He's a tremendous fighter um, and, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting next steps. Absolutely, absolutely. So I want to go on to Chris Eubank, Conor Ben. Rumours around December 23rd, maybe Saudi, maybe here, maybe Wales, obviously subject to whichever commission's going to put it on. What's your thoughts on that? How soon are we to getting to know exactly what's going to happen and, in, and indeed if it's going to be in the, the latter part of the year? Look, discussions ongoing, I, I believe. Everyone, it's, it's quite simple to say it's the biggest fight out there by a million miles for both of them. And I believe, you know, we'll get things done very soon. Um, but fights of this magnitude take time. I believe it will happen in the UK. You know, obviously talk about Cardiff potentially, Tottenham as well, you know, two great venues. Um, so let's see, but we're going to work hard in the background. 
there's been a lot of talking for a long, long time about that fight, and I, I do believe we'll see it. Yeah, because I, I, I believe it's probably the second British biggest fight in British boxing after obviously Fury Joshua. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you share that? 100%. 100%. Look, it's been a tough period as well for British boxing. We haven't seen some of the big nights of past, like, you know, the massive nights, and this is the kind of fight I think that British boxing needs. So the build-up, uh, moving on to Cameron versus Taylor, the build-up to that fight is pretty epic. We're, we're all going to be there. We've booked our flights. Can't wait to get there. Um, what do you, how do you think that plays out? Repeat? Revenge? I'm not picking a winner. Look, you know, we've, we've worked with That's both. That's a shame. <laughs> no, we've worked, we've worked with both of them for a long time. Shanzel Cameron's been on an unbelievable journey, you know, where, you know, what she's, you know, what the fight she's taken, you know, becoming undisputed, you know, the fight in Abu Dhabi against Jessica McCaskill. She fought in Vegas. She went to Dublin into Kate Taylor's backyard uh, and won that fight in a tremendous fight. Um, and, and Katie Taylor has been, you know, a superstar for, for boxing. Um, and I think we're in for another treat. The first fight was brilliant to watch, and I can't wait to watch the second one. You know, when it gets to it, when they get in the ring, we can't do anything at that point. So the best will win, and that's what this this what this sport's all about is watching two of the best in the sport come together. They've done it once already, and they'll do it again. And we're just very excited about a great night in Dublin. Absolutely. Um, going on to the last thing, obviously AJ was talking with Louis Theroux, um, and he was asked uh, Louis. You know, about putting him up against a fight against IFL's very own Coogan Cassius and I, I spoke to Coogan the other day and said why don't you challenge our Max two of them go back 30 years that'd be interesting what do you think Matchroom put that on? Uh, Misfits I've set that up though. I know a few geezers over at Misfits who'll be up for that we'll make that happen I think it'd be interesting well there's 30 years of friendship there so it could, it could be out of luck but it'd be great it'd be great great to see I'll, I'll tune in I'll pay 29.99 for that there we go. Was it Coogan wanted an 80 20 split? We'll go with that. That'd be fine. I, that think, price. That, I think that. Just take it, honestly. Yeah. Once you beat him, that's all that matters. Well, thank you, Frank. Thanks very much for your time. Cheers, man. And good luck. Appreciate it. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks a lot, Frank.